Uh, good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. <clears throat> I'm here this morning because I wanted to give you a code review on the data set Climate Change Earth Surface Temperature Data. And uh, basically, the reason why I decided to do this is because I recently created a course on Udemy called um, Learn Time Series analysis, forecasting, and intra-cackle competition. And um, one of the data sets that I was using was uh, temperature in Melbourne, Australia. And I thought, well, that would be a really good idea to um, to see if, if the climate is changing, see if it's true. And um, so I looked on, I was looking for a global a temperature data set and they had a global temperature data set on Kaggle and so I decided to use that and I decided to see for myself if the climate is indeed changing and so that's what this blog post is all about and um, we'll just see for yourself like as we go through the as we go through the code we'll see for ourselves is if the climate's changing because scientists tell us climate's changing but we should be able to check it out for ourselves and uh, data science can tell you if the client if the climate's changing so um, I opened this program on Kaggle's Jupyter Notebook which is a free online Jupyter Notebook and you can do it too uh, you don't have to install a Python interpreter on your computer. If you just go onto the Kaggle website, you can use a Kaggle Jupyter Notebook, which is what I have done. And I already have 14 views on my um, Jupyter Notebook because I made it public. So you can look at it as well. You can look at the Jupyter Notebook as well. But you don't need to because we're doing a code review. So the data set that we're using is climate change earth surface temperature data. Takes 5.4 seconds to run, so that's good. And here's the description. It says, some say climate change is the biggest threat of our age, while others say it's a myth based on dodgy science. We are turning some of the data over to you so you can form your own view, even more than with our other data sets that Kaggle has featured. There's a huge amount of data cleaning and preparation that goes into putting together a long time study of climate trends. Early data was collected by technicians using mercury thermometers where any variation in the visit time impacted measurements. In the 1940s, the construction of airports caused many weather stations to be moved. In the 1980s, there was a move to electronic thermometers that are said to have a cooling bias. So that's the problem statement. So after we created the Jupyter Notebook, and read our problem statement. Now what we're going to do is we're going to import libraries. So we're going to import NumPy as MP, which uh, performs numerical computations, creates NumPy arrays, and also performs linear algebra. We're going to import pandas SPD, which is the data processing function, and it also and it creates data frames and maintains them. We're going to import OS, which goes into the operating system and retrieves our files. We're going to import statsmodels.api as SM, because statsmodels is, um, is, is the library that I'm going to be using to form a prediction. We're going to be using map, importing matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, which is a graphic library, and we'll plot our graphics onto a graph, plot the data points onto a graph. We're going to import Seaborn as SNS. So um, that's a, a 
a higher level graphics library that also carries out statistical operations on the graphs. We're going to import warnings because I don't want to see any warnings. And then so after we've imported our libraries, we're going to load our data sets. We're going to have a for loop to load all the data sets that are in the Kaggle, Kaggle subdirectory. These are all the data sets that you can use to check climate temperature. You've got data sets by state, country, city, major city, and then you've got your global temperatures. And so the global temperatures is what I was interested in. We're going to read the files. The only file that I was interested in was temperatures, and we're going to use pandas to read the file. So temperatures equals pd.readcsv, and then we've got the file for the global temperatures. So these are our global temperatures, and you can see that there's lots of NANs in there. But what we're going to be interested in is the date and the land average temperature. That's what we want. Hmm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the time series from that data frame. So TS equals temperatures and then DT and land average temperature because that's what I was interested in. What I wanted to do was I wanted to create a time series. Now, if I had wanted to, I could have made it a multivariate time series and I could have used the other columns to do a multivariate time series, but I decided that I was just happy to do a, use a univariate time series. So we've got our date and our land average temperature. And then so TSDT equals PD to date time TSDT. So we time stamped the date. TS index equals TS.DT. So we made the date the index. TS equals TS.DT axis 1. So we dropped axis. We didn't need that anymore. And then we've got TS. So you can see now we've got like the index column, which is the date, and the land average temperature, which is what we're interested in. Look at the info. So we've got a date time index of 3,192 entries from 1750-01-01 to 2015-01201. So we're missing about um, seven years because the last time this data set was updated, was five years ago. So, but we still should be able to come to a good conclusion with the information that we have. So, um, what we wanted to do, we wanted to see if there were any null values because you cannot have any null values in a time series. So we've got 12 null values. So what I decided to do is I decided to interpolate those null values. That's one of the methods that you can use um, when you have null values in a time series. So TS equals TS land average temperature dot interpolate method equals linear TS. So it's a type of imputation and um, it's... You can also do like something called FBL, which it will just give you the value of the last known value, last observed value. But I decided I'd try out interpolate and see how we get on there. And it's a type of imputation for a time series. So now we're going to do is we're going to check to see if there's any more null values. There's no more null values. We're going to plot a graph of the temperatures, and you can see that it's really hard to read. This graph is very hard to read. So we're going to resample the data. We're just going to check the data annually. So it's going to be, um, see, 1750 to 1950 is 200. 
and 1950-2015 is 65. So it's going to give you 65, 265 measurements. So we're going to resample it. TS resample equals TS dot resample A. And we're going to check the mean. So we're going to only check the value once a year. And we're going to get the mean of that year. So this is our resample data. And this is what the um, plot looks like resampled. And you can see that um, it's got, definitely got a trend. The trend is going up. And I'm not sure that it's got any seasonality. It's got a lot of spikes in it. But I'm not sure if those spikes don't necessarily have any pattern. But the trend does have seasonality. You can see that the temperature is on the increase right here. So it started increasing. The temperature started increasing about 1970. And I remember I was in school. I was in junior high school then. And they weren't. They were talking about the ecology. I remember when I was in junior high school, I wasn't even in junior high school in 1970. I was in grade school. I'm not that old. But they were talking about ecology and the ozone layer and things like that. And they were saying like hairspray and stuff like that was affecting the ozone layer. So, so the temperature started increasing around 1970. Here we go. So now we've done a histogram. So you can see that the the mean temperature is generally 8.5 to 9. The top mean is like maybe 8.75 degrees. 8.5 to 8.75 degrees. That's the top temperature. Now we're going to check out some statistics. So the max row equals TS resample. IDX max axis equals zero, print max row, TDS resample max row. So the max row is 2015, 1231. That's also the last row. <laughs> and it was 9.831. And that was your median temperature, mean temperature. The min row is TS resample, IDX min axis equals zero. Print min row, TS resample min row. So your min row was 1752, 1231. So it was two years after they started taking records. And the average was 6.5. So let's look over here. So here you go, 1752, it was 6.5. So I don't know what happened. I know. In the 17 or 1800s, the Earth was going through a mini ice age. Or it could have just been somebody didn't take the records correctly. You never know. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the Dickey Fuller test. And we're going to check for stationarity. ADF result equals AD Fuller brackets TS resample auto lag comma auto lag equals AIC. Print p value ADF result and then ADF statistic equals um, ADF result zero. So um, we've got a p value of 0.8 and um, we've got an ADF statistic of neg 0.86. So that indicates that definitely the um, time series isn't stationary. It isn't stationary. But I'm not going to do anything about it because what they did previously in earlier years is they would make the time series stationary but by using differencing. Differencing is one method that they use. But generally, I believe that when you use differencing, it adds noise to the system. But now with the newer models, with the newer 
uh, time series models and stats models, it does differencing already in the model. And so I decided I'm going to use a model that does differencing already in the model. So we're not going to do anything about the fact that it's not stationary. And then um, we're going to do um, we're going to decompose the signal so you can see that the signal is decomposed. So this is the observed signal, and you can see it definitely has a trend. The trend is definitely going up, and uh, there's no seasonal component. All the little surges and spikes are just like noise or just variations in the data, but there's no seasonal component. And then you've got your residual components. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split the data frame. The uh, training set is going to be 90% of TS resample, and the test set is going to be 10% of TS resample. And then so train equals TS resample colon to the end of train length. Test equals TS resample train length to the end of the tenth time series and then we check our shape so we've got 239 uh, rows on the train set and 27 rows on the test set check our mean and variance because mean and variance is another way that you can measure to see if a data set is stationary so on our mean set, the difference between the train set and the test set is negative 1.118. And on the variance, the difference between the train set and the test set is 0 0.157. So the variance doesn't look too bad, but we already know that it's not stationary because number one, you can see that there is a trend in the time series and number two we did our Dickey Fuller test and the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 and if your p-value is greater than 0 0.05 then that means the time series isn't stationary so we're going to analyze the test set this is new the new analysis of the test set so we're going to say that the maximum value is about 9.6 you have the most readings at 9.6. And now we're going to do the ARIMA model. I had originally tried to do Ceramax, but now that we have looked more in depth into the time series and we've seen that there is no seasonality in this time series, Ceramax wasn't an appropriate model to use. In addition to the fact that Ceramex wasn't an appropriate model to use, it just didn't work. It didn't work. I don't know if it's a problem with Kaggle, if Ceramex is too new, but it just wouldn't work. It gave me something on the screen, but it definitely wasn't what I was looking for. So we used ARIMA, which is Auto Regression Integrated Moving Average. And uh, with auto regression integrated moving average, you have parameters that you have to tune. And these parameters are P, D, Q. P is for auto regressive. D is for integrated, which does differencing. And Q is for moving average. And then so that means, so what we did was we said y train equals train dot values and y test equals test dot values. And what we did was we put it on a um, grid search. So this is your grid search. This is your, your PDQ, PDQ values. And then this is your grid search that you, and I went ahead and remarked off the grid search. And the reason why is because it took a little bit of time to do it. So what you do is you do it once, get your grid parameters, and then you don't need to use it anymore. So then you can just like remark off the uh, function. Well, this isn't a function, but I made it a function later on. You um, remark off the code because the code takes a while to iterate through the the time series and that's just going to be time that you're going to be wasting waiting for it to iterate through 
So you just remark it off after you've done it the once and got the code once. So I iterated through it. And the code that I got was 021. So um, import steps models.api is SM. Model equals Arima. Y train order equals 021 bit. Model AIC is 271.8. AIC is a metric used to see what a good fit the data series is to the model. And so now I made predictions. Y hat equals model dot predict lin train comma lin train plus lin test minus one. And um, these are my predictions. This is this is it. You can see that the predictions are moving upward. They're not moving upward as much as um, as much as the actual values are, but they are moving upward. So test equals PD dot data frame test. Y hat equals PD dot data frame Y hat. So we're taking test and Y hat and we're using pandas to make them data frames. And now we're checking the um, checking the the error because error is what you want to look for. Excuse me, it's early in the morning. Error is what you want to look for, and um, mean squared error is an error where it says np square brackets np subtract brackets test comma white hat brackets brackets dot mean brackets. And then RMSC is what I like to look at for. That's root mean squared error. And also, like when you enter Kaggle competitions and other competitions, if it's a regression, then they're going to be looking for RMSC as well. So RMSC equals NP dot square root MSC. So the error, the RMSC that I got was 0 0.27, which is pretty good because that's what you want. You want the least error. The least error is what you're looking for. And the uh, thing is, is what I, when I recently did this Udemy course, which I will leave a link to the Udemy course for you in the descriptions, in the descriptions box, there was a problem when we were trying to do the RMSC, we originally had done math.sqrt. Well, RMSC wouldn't work because of that. And so I found out whenever I was doing research as to why it wouldn't work, I found out that um, there's a glitch in math inbuilt library, and you're supposed to use NumPy SQRT. So yeah, so don't use math SQRT because there's a glitch in math where it might make it where it doesn't work, which is what I found that to be the case. So I'm just using NumPy SQRT just to save my sanity. So now we're going to Y test equals uh, blank array for Y in test land average temperature y test dot append y and this is your y test and that is your um yeah that's your y test y hat array equals blank array or empty array for y and y hat zero y hat array dot append y and this is your y hat array okay And then we've created a data frame so you can compare the actual values to the predicted values. DF equals PD data frame actual colon Y test comma predicted colon Y hat array index equals test index. So now we've got our, you can compare the predictions to the actuals and you can look at yourself and see see what you think do you think that do you think that we are in climate change do you think that the earth is getting higher what do you think i mean you know you don't have to listen to the scientists you can come to your own conclusions there's one thing that i find to be really disappointing in all this because i like david ike 
And David Icke was saying that the earth isn't getting warmer, it's getting cooler. And that's just simply not true. When you look at the facts, when you look at global temperatures, you look at global temperatures, you can see that the temperature is actually increasing. And this is as at 2015, we haven't got the temperatures for the last eight years. But if we had the temperatures for the last eight years, it could be even higher. Could be even higher. So in 1750, we started out with a mean temperature of 8.37. And um, in 2015, we ended with a temperature of 9.83. That's These are mean values. So that means that the temperature of the Earth has gone up about 1.8 five degrees, about 1.4 degrees. Um, in 265 years, I think that's what we said it was. So let's just see what happens with global warming. They call it climate change now, global warming. But here you go. You know, you don't need a scientist to tell you that we're in global warming. You can look at this plot yourself and see for yourself that the temperature of the earth is increasing. So thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I would like to thank my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. And again, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will look forward to making more videos for you in the future.